Two men who looked alike switched places and were transported into different worlds, and one of them was destined to become a great king. The other one was an ordinary student from Japan, named Hinohara Arita, and his friends called him as Hinohara. But his situation was not as simple compared to other students, because he also experienced oppression from his classmates for several years. Fortunately, he met a new friend named Sugiru. But his old best friend from middle school, named Katawaki, and its new friends would constantly bother him. They had a fight in middle school that Katawaki have not yet forgotten. One day, Katawaki's group approached Sugiru after they found out that he was Hinohara's friend. In Sugiru's fear, he was forced to say that he and Hinohara were not friends and that he never considered him a friend. While in the other world, in a place called Amoakuni, Hinohara's look-alike lived, and his name was Arita. His grandmother, named Makari, forced him to disguise himself as a woman. Since he did not want to agree, Makari was forced to attack him. The reason why he was asked to do this was because their clan or the Heim clan needed to send someone to an important ceremony that was held only once in 30 years. This was a ceremony where the Alamakuni would be replaced by a new leader whom they call Heim Ou. But that person who would take her place must be a woman, and since the Heim clan had no other female members, Makari was forced to send Arida. Arida knew that he would be killed if they found out that he was a man, but Makari said that their clan would still be punished if they did not send anyone as their clan's representative. Makari did not care about whatever might happen to her as long as Arida would live, so that he could protect the Hayagami that they inherited from their ancestors. For this reason, Arida was forced to follow his grandmother, and with the help of his childhood friend from the Anin clan, named Kotoha, they were able to dress him like a woman. Since Kotoha could see Arata's concern on his clan, she gave him the protective charm that she was wearing. She said that this charm was from the current Haim Ou, named Kakuri, and it was given when he served in the capital. When they arrived at the capital, Arata immediately went in the venue where the ceremony would be performed. The twelve Shin's Ho surrounded him, and Kakuri arrived just moments later. As Kakuri began the ceremony, a Shin's Ho, named Kunnagi, suddenly appeared to attack her. When she fell, she was able to use her Amatsuriki to protect herself. Kanagi learned that Arata was a boy after he heard his voice. Arata tried to ask other Shin's Ho for help, but none of them helped him. Kanagi suddenly attacked him and it was here that he said that the twelve Shin's Ho were carrying out a revolution. Arata quickly left there and the fire suddenly disappeared too, causing other people to wonder what was happening inside. Kanagi came out to inform everyone about what happened to Kakuri and blamed Arata, saying that he was the one who did it. Because of this, the soldiers moved quickly to find Arata. Arata went to the Kando forest, and when Kanagi found out about it, he just laughed and said that Arata would be eaten alive in that place. After Kotoha heard about what happened, she immediately ran towards the area. On the other hand, while Hinohara was on his way home, he repeatedly wished that he would just disappear. Suddenly, something strange happened, he went to a different dimension and met Arata face to face. Then they switched places, so Hinohara was surprised that he was already in the forest. When he came out of it, he was suddenly attacked by those chasing him. Because of fear, he quickly went back to the forest and hid. When the Hayagami sensed that he was in their village, Hinohara was suddenly teleported to another part of the forest. That was when Kotoha found him and immediately hugged Hinohara. He was surprised by this, and immediately asked her who she was. The soldiers quickly saw them, so one of them immediately gave a signal to their companions. As the other soldiers headed there, another Shinzo, named Akachi, approached Kanagi. He told Kanagi that he should have used his Hayagami, so that he would not have wasted any time chasing Arida. But Kanagi was still confident that he could catch Arida. When Hinohara reached the village, Kotoha informed Makari of what had happened. Hinohara tried to tell them that he was not the Arata that they knew, but they did not believe him. When Kotoha mentioned that this might be because of the Kando forest, Makari decided to talk to Hinohara. At this moment, Hinohara said that he was from Japan, so Makari mentioned what she knew about the Kando forest. She said that anyone who entered it was believed to switch places with someone and be transported to another world. After hearing this, Hinohara suddenly remembered when he saw Arata before he went to the Kando forest. Makari suddenly heard Kotoha scream, and it turned out that Kanagi arrived to look for Arata. When Makari came out, she said that Arata was not there, but Kanagi did not believe her. Since Hinohara could not stand Kotoha's screams from the pain, he decided to show up. 
Kunagi immediately ordered his companion to kill him, fortunately, he was able to avoid the sword. When Hinohara saw the Hayagami, he quickly picked it up. And because of the anger that he felt, the Hayagami suddenly reacted. That was when Kunagi used his Hayagami, called Hamura, so Makari immediately told Hinohara what to do to awaken the Hayagami that he was holding. Hinohara did what she said, so he was able to parry Kunagi's attack. Kunagi could not believe that Hinohara was already a show. After a while, the house gradually collapsed, so they decided to get out of it. Meanwhile in the other world, Nao and his mother were wondering why they could not reach Hinohara after several calls. Suddenly, they heard a commotion in the distance, so they went to check it out. It turned out to be Arida, whom they thought as Hinohara. When the soldiers tried to find Hinohara and the others, they could not find them anymore. Kanagi could not forget that the Hayagami of Hinohara was able to block his attack. Makari and her companion successfully got away from the enemies, and they hid in a cave. Then she told Hinohara the truth about the Hayagami. She said that these were deities of the Amawakuni that existed in the form of swords. The Hayagami would choose who would own them which called Sho, and Hinohara was already one of them. Akachi appeared again to Kanagi to inform him that Arida should be captured alive because he needed to be judged in front of the people. While Hinohara was thinking about what was happening in his life, Kotoha approached him. Since Kotoha still believed that he was the Arida that she knew, Hinohara once again clarified that he was not the Arida she was referring to. No matter how he explained it to her, she still did not believe him. She suddenly hugged him, and she was surprised that he was not wearing the protective charm. Because she would not believe that he was a different person, Hinohara just said that he might have lost it. In her desire to give him protection, she also gave him the other pair of the protective charm. A few moments later, Kanagi and his men suddenly came there with Makari who was already captured. Since Hinohara's Hayagami was not with him, he could not do anything but let the enemies took him. While he was in the carriage, the protective charm suddenly gave off light to create a portal, and he saw Arida. When he realized that Arida was inside his room, he tried to enter, but he just bumped into it. That was when they talked, and they confirmed that they had switched places. He asked Arida why he attacked Haim Oyu, but Arida immediately denied it. He also said that Kunagi was the culprit, and that the other members of the Twelve Shinsho were his accomplices. At first, Hinohara was hesitant to believe Arida because he was afraid to trust other people again. For this reason, Arida told Hinohara not to trust him because his grandmother told him that when a person always said that he needed to be trusted, the other person would start to doubt him. Then Arida also thought that he would just call him Hinohara, and Hinohara would just call him Arida because they had the same name. Then he asked how his grandmother and Kotoha were doing, and after he confirmed that they were okay, he apologized to Hinohara who was now suffering the hardships in his place. Hinohara said that he was already a show, so Arida was happy to hear it because Hinohara could be able to fight the other Shinzo. That was when their conversation ended because Hinohara's mother called the attention of Arida. After a few hours of travel, Hinohara and the others had arrived at the capital. The Shinzo, named Yutaka, led the trial, and it was also attended by other Shinzo. At that moment, the soldiers were on guard to Makari and the others. Makari knew what was going to happen next, so she asked Kotoha for a favor. As the trial began, Hinohara tried to tell the information that he learned from Arida. At this point, Akachi pointed his Hayagami at him, and the other Shinzo also spoke that's why the others did not believe his accusations against them. Because of this, he was found guilty, but instead of punishing him with death, Kanagi decided to send him to Gatoya Island. Criminals were brought in the island, so they could experience a hellish state. Kanagi came to this decision because he wanted to know more about Hinohara's Hayagami. While they were on their way to Gatoya, he was surprised when the soldier brought Kotoha to him after she was caught while she was trying to board the airship. It turned out that Makari had assigned her to bring the Hayagami to him. He immediately tried to use it, but it did not work. After a few moments, the protective charm suddenly lit up, and at the same time, he heard a woman's voice as if they entered another dimension. Kikuri appeared to them because she had a wish for Hinohara. It turned out that she knew what happened in the trial, and was impressed by what he did. Before she told her request to Hinohara, she told him the duties of a Haimoyu which was to control the power of the Hayagami to maintain peace. 
but in her current condition, there was a high possibility that the power would dictate their world and make people suffer. So she now asked Hinohara to lead the Alamakuni in her place. She also wanted Hinohara to take her Hayagami to her location before she die. Although Hinohara had no confidence that he could fulfill Kakuri's request, she still had full confidence in him that he would be able to do it. Then Kakuri suddenly disappeared and they were back inside the airship. After some time, they arrived at Gatoya Island. When they entered there, they saw the other prisoners, and their faces showed how difficult their condition while they were on the island. He was surprised that what happened to Haim Oyu had also reached this prison. After a while, Kanadiai and Jinchi suddenly came there to get the things that they brought. Kanadiai attacked Hinohara because he was sure that Hinohara would be of great use to them. After all, he was the culprit in the attack on Haim Oyu. But when he knocked Hinohara down, they suddenly felt shaking. Since the people already knew what was going to happen, they quickly hid. After the two prisoners were caught by the duct pipes, these things also stopped moving. A female prisoner approached Hinohara and said that what had just happened was called the judgment. Each day, the warden, named Tsutsuga would choose two prisoners to be sucked by the pipes. While the other Shinzo had returned to their respective territories, Kanagi continued to investigate Hinohara's Hayagami. Akachi went to him because he wanted to know Kanagi's real reason why he sent Hinohara to the prison. So Kanagi just said that he just wanted to know something more, and if he got those details, he would let him know right away. The next day, the judgment once again started, and this caused the collapse of the floor where Kotoha was standing. Hinohara quickly descended to look for her, until he encountered a group of criminals. They thought that they might receive a reward if they killed Hinohara, so they chased after him. While Hinohara was hiding, the woman they talked to yesterday approached him again. That was when they introduced themselves to each other, and this woman said that her name was Osum. When she found out that Hinohara was looking for Kotoha, she immediately said that Kanadiai and Jinchi had saved her. Osum knew what it was like to be separated from a loved one, so she did not hesitate to help Hinohara. Meanwhile, Kotoha was currently talking to Kanadiai, and after some time, Kanadiai decided to go out to look for Jinchi. He saw him lying on the floor with Hinohara, so he immediately assumed that Hinohara had attacked Jinchi. He repeatedly attacked Hinohara, causing Hinohara to pull out his Hayagami to block Kanadiai. Jinchi suddenly woke up and told Kanadiai that what he was thinking about Hinohara was wrong. A member of Bluebeard came there to take revenge for Jinchi's actions, but he was preceded by Hinohara. That was the moment when Kanadiai found out that Hinohara saved Jinchi from the Bluebeard members. Since Jinchi's ring was taken from him, Kanadiai rushed into Bluebeard's territory to take it back. Hinohara brought Jinchi to Kotoha to heal the injuries he had sustained. Jinchi talked about how he and Kanadiai met and why the ring was important to him. The ring had been given to him by his mother before he was kidnapped by a group of thieves who were Kanadiai's previous companions. A few minutes later, Kanadiai arrived and he successfully retrieved Jinchi's ring. Then he immediately decided to challenge Hinohara to a fight and thought that if he could kill the attacker to Haim Oyu, they might be granted a parole. But before they even started, there was another judgment. Kanadiai did not expect that he was going to be chosen, and when Hinohara was about to be sucked by the pipe, Jinchi pushed him because he wanted to follow Kanadiai. Hinohara was in shock and unable to move after what happened. But suddenly he had the courage to save Kanadiai and Jinchi because he believed that they were still alive. They enter a pipe hoping that it was heading to the location of Kanadiai and Jinchi. When Kanadiai and Jinchi woke up, they were both bound. Tsutsuga suddenly spoke and told them that they were about to be judged for the crime they committed. But they would be given a chance to save themselves. They were told that they must fight each other, and the winner would be declared innocent and leave the prison. And if they did not agree to this, the two of them would face death. Kanadiai agreed to it, so both of them were released. He rushed immediately, but Jinchi did not want to fight him. When Hinohara and Kotoha arrived to the location, they were surprised that the two were fighting, so Tsutsuga told them that in order to survive, they had to eliminate their opponent. Hinohara went down to try to stop Tsutsuga, but he was just attacked by him. When Kanadiai was about to finish off his opponent, Jinchi was forced to attack and injure Kanadiai. Hinohara knew that Kanadiai only did this on purpose so that Jinchi could be saved and get out of this prison. 
But Tsutsuga suddenly captured Jinchi because he was still going to be punished for the crime he committed against Kanadi Ai. That was when Hinohara got angry and used his Hayagami to free Jinchi and fight Tsutsuga. They exchanged attacks until Hinohara almost fell. The other prisoners came out and were surprised to see Hinohara. On the other hand, Kanagi was currently heading there to meet Hinohara again. It was only a few moments before Hinohara successfully used the power of his Hayagami, and the others could see the bright light as well. When Tsutsuga attacked, Hinohara just easily dissolved it. Suddenly, they saw Tsutsuga, and it turned out that his Hayagami was buried in his stomach and was already swallowed by the darkness. When Hinohara touched it, he saw Tsutsuga's past and how his Hayagami was buried in his stomach. He decided to pull it out to release Tsutsuga from its engulfment in darkness. At that moment, Tsutsuga realized that he was like Hinohara who had experienced the same fate when they were betrayed by their recognized friend. But Hinohara clarified that he still considered Sugiru a friend. It was not easy for him to remove the Hayagami, but because he was persistent in removing it, Hinohara was able to do it successfully. Tsutsuga was stunned by what he did, and after a few moments, his Hayagami or Sanawa returned to its previous form. Hinohara gained Tsutsuga's trust, so the old man decided to submit to him. When he stood up, he used the power of Sanawa to restore the Gatoya to its former appearance. Because of this, the people who were absorbed by Tsutsuga also returned, and among them was Osum's colleague, named Masahi. Tsutsuga told Hinohara that there was a danger coming, and they had to leave there. When Kanagi arrived, Tsutsuga appeared to him, so Kanagi learned that he had submitted to Hinohara. Tsutsuga mentioned that Hinohara's Hayagami was said to be the sword of origins that would rule their world. Hinohara decided to go to the capital, while Kanagi went home first to his territory or to the Kagatsuchi where the most important person in his life, named Imisu, was buried. When they reached the shore, they looked at the map that Kanadi I was carrying and found out that they were in Narutaki. As they observed the map, Hinohara found out that they were still too far from the capital. Based on the map, they would surely need to pass through Kunnagi's territory. It was also here that Hinohara learned that the Awamakuni was divided into 12 territories led by the 12 Shins Ho. Jin Chi noticed the smoke like it was coming from a bonfire, so they went to see it. Jin Chi immediately recognized the people who were there because they were his villagers. When he got there, they finally met his mother. When they got down to the villagers, Jinchi introduced Kanadi Ai to his mother and said that he was the one who saved him, but he felt awkward in front of Jinchi's mother. Hinohara and Kotoha learned from the person they talked to that there was a possibility of war because of what happened in Haimou. This was the reason why they were now heading to the borderlands, so they would not be stuck when the war happens. After their conversation with the man, Kanadi Ai approached them and he told Hinohara that the twelfth Shinzo would now compete for the position of the great king. Otherwise, they would just go back to their old battle in the days before they were ruled by Haim Ou. Since the road to the borderlands was about to open, Jin Chi and the other villagers started their travel. Jin Chi thought that Kanadi Ai would go with them, but it turned out that Kanadi Ai chose to separate from him. The road was about to close again, so Jin Chi's mother quickly pulled him back. Hinohara and Kotoha were surprised by Kanadi's decision, so Kanadi I said that he could not go with Jinchi because his companions had previously attacked the village of Jinchi and kidnapped him. After hearing this, Hinohara decided to include him in their journey to the capital. After a few hours of walking, they rested because Hinohara could no longer walk. Kotoha gave him food which was made from muru meat. Since Hinohara did not know what kind of animal it was, he asked Kotoha. Just in time, the animal passed behind him, so he was shocked that it was the one that they were referring to as the Muru. But the animal seemed to be angry when it saw them, so it chased after them. Fortunately, when Kanei tripped, they all stumbled and fell, that's why the Muru did not notice and just passed them. That was when they saw Honi carrying the Muru's egg, so they realized the reason why the creature was so angry. The Muru came back again, and since Kanadi I was unable to run quickly, the creature chased after him. After a few minutes, while they were talking to Honi, she was surprised that the egg she was carrying suddenly hatched. The leader of her village, named Ohika, came and they saw that Kanadi Ai was with him. Hinohara approached them, but he suddenly collapsed. When he woke up, Kanadi Ai told him that they were in Ohika's village. After a while, Fuyo, Ohika's wife, entered the room to return Hinohara's clothes. 
He learned from Kanadiai that he had a fever and that he should thank Kotoha because she cured him. Kanade also told him that Ohika was Kunnagi's Zokushu. The Zokushu were the show that served the Shinzo. Ohika suddenly entered the room with his Hayagami. It turned out that he already knew that Hainohara was also a show because Honi mentioned it to him. Using his Hayagami which called Kanari, Ohika repaired Kanadi's weapon. While Kanagi was in a miss's grave, his soldier called him because something bad happened at the house of one of his Zokushu, named Kijisu. When he came there, he was surprised by what he saw and Kijisu was no longer there. According to the disciple of Kijisu, the attack was done by Akachi. Meanwhile, Ohika brought Hinohara and Kanadiai, they discussed the battle for the position of great king. Ohika explained that although this would cause war, there could be a great king without killing each other if all the Shu decided to submit to the chosen one. After hearing this, Hinohara suddenly remembered what Tsutsuga had done. They were even surprised that Ohika also knew what happened to the Gatoya, including Tsutsuga's submission to a show who was the one who attacked Haim Ou. But because of what Tsutsuga had done, he believed that this show was innocent because Sanoa had the ability to see the truth about a person. Since he had also heard the name of the show that he was referring to, he already knew that it was Hinohara. One of Ohika's servants came there to inform him that he had a visitor. When he was on his way to where his guest was waiting, he met Kotoha and Honi who had changed their clothes. When Ohika noticed this, he was happy for Honi because the dress was just perfect for her. Then he asked her to do something important for him. On the other hand, Kanagi immediately went to his other Zokushu, and the same thing happened to them. He remembered Ohika and became worried for his safety, so he quickly prepared his airship. Hinohara was surprised that Honi suddenly told them to go, and this was what Ohika had ordered her to do. They found out that Akachi was Ohika's guest, and he told Ohika that Kanagi was the one who attacked Haim Ou. Akachi offered Ohika to be his Zokushu and submit to him as well. Ohika did not immediately believe what Akachi had said, but even if he was saying the truth, Ohika said that he would still remain loyal to Kanagi. Akachi did not like his answer and was forced to use his Hayagami called Okoro to target Fuyo. In Ohika's fear for the safety of his wife, he was forced to follow Akachi's wishes. Before he surrendered, he asked Akachi not to hurt his wife and subordinates, so Akachi promised to keep them alive. After his submission, their servant came in, but they were immediately killed by Akachi. Then he also killed Fuyo. After witnessing this, Honi lost consciousness. Akachi felt that there was another person on the other side of the cloth, so he removed the cover. Kanagi suddenly came there, but it was already too late. In his anger, he attacked Akachi, but was easily blocked by his opponent. He attacked again, but Akachi blocked it and retaliated with his attack. They continued to exchange attacks until they reached the ground. The impact from their attacks was so strong that it made Hinohara and the others to be thrown away, so Hinohara used his Hayagami to save themselves. When Akachi mentioned Imisu, Kanagi suddenly weakened, causing the Hamira to leave his hand. Akachi also showed the Hayagami of Kanagi's Zokushu which were already part of Okoro's power. When Akachi also took Hamira, Kanagi suddenly rushed to attack him. Kanagi tried to fight it even without Hayagami, but he could not hit his opponent. Because of this, Akachi just beat him using the Okoro. Since Hinohara could no longer take what Akachi was doing to Kanagi, he yelled at Akachi to stop. He said everything about his thoughts and objection to Akachi's method just to get the position of great king. But Akachi did not care no matter what he said because as a show, they only have two fates. He could either force other show to submit to him, or he will submit to one of them. Akachi then decided to leave, and left Kanagi to experience the agony. Honi approached him to ask for help to get Ohika back. But Kanagi made it clear to her that this was impossible to happen once the show submitted, and he no longer had his Hayagami. As he was about to leave, Hinohara stopped him because he could not believe that Kanagi would give up his Zokushu just like that. But he did not listen to Hinohara and left there. At night, Hinohara was thinking about Kakuri's request because he could not do what Akachi was doing. He also wanted to stop Akachi, but he doubted his ability. Aside from that, he did not have the intention to force other show to submit to him just like what Akachi did. But Kotoha reminded him that he did not have to do this because they could voluntarily submit to him like Tsutsuga did. And Kotoha also remembered what Makari had told her when she was a child about a legendary Hayagami.
although it did not have the ability to attack, it destined to rule their world. She had a hunch that Hinohara's weapon was the legendary Hayagami that Makari was referring to, and it was called Tsukuyo. When Hinohara tried to call it in that name, his Hayagami released a light that Kunnagi also saw. The next day, Hinohara spoke to Honi to tell her about the possibility of bringing Ohika back. Although he was not sure how it would happen, he was confident that Haim Oyu could do it. Then they decided to continue their journey to the capital. In the other world, Aradin noticed Sugiru outside their house, but he also left immediately. He went out and was able to reach him, so Sugiro just handed him the one he borrowed from Hinohara and left. The next day, he decided to go to school, since he always saw Katawaki in the photo, he greeted him thinking that he was still Hinohara's best friend. Suddenly, his mother called him because they were going to see his teacher to inform him that his memories had not yet returned. As Arata was heading to their room, Katawaki's companion stopped him and brought him to the rooftop. Katawaki was waiting for him there, but what he immediately noticed was the beautiful scenery from the top. His actions made Katawaki even more annoyed at him, and that was when Arata noticed them. Because of their behavior, Arata immediately realized that these were not Hinohara's friends. He was about to leave when Katawaki suddenly punched him, but Arata just easily blocked it. Then he retaliated with a kick, causing Katawaki to immediately lose consciousness. While in Arata's world, as Hinohara and his companions were crossing the river, Kotoha tripped and hurt her ankle. Since she could not continue walking, they went back to treat her injury. That was when they found out that the members of Anin clan like Kotoha were unable to heal themselves. So Kanadi I decided to look for herbs that could be used to heal Kotoha. After a while, Hinohara came out and he was able to talk to Arata again. He informed Arata of what happened including Akachi's actions in taking Kunnagi's Hayagami. Arata mentioned that he went to Hinohara's school, including what he did to a student. When Hinohara found out that Arata was talking about Katawaki, he was dumbfounded and could not speak until their conversation ended. He was about to return to Kotoha when Kunnagi suddenly grabbed him. When Kunnagi let him go, he was able to release fire from Hamura's power. But Kanagi said that he could not control it because he did not have the Hamura. When the fire attacked Hinohara, he quickly pulled out the Tsukuyo to block it. After that, Kanagi stated her intention to take the Tsukuyo from Hinohara. He was planning to use it to fight Akachi and get the Hamura back. He managed to grab the Tsukuyo, but when he was about to attack Hinohara, Kotoha came there. But she was suddenly surrounded by fire, causing Kanagi to remember what happened to Umisu. Kanadi I came there too, and with Hinohara's desire to protect Kotoha, he went to her. Kanagi could not bear to watch the situation of the two, so he decided to save them. Because of what he did, his arm hurt again and he remembered his past with Akachi and Imisu. Until the day came when their subordinates staged a revolt which was the reason why Akachi chose to stay behind, so that he and Imisu could survive. When they arrived to Kagetsuchi, Ohika saw them. They lived there for a meantime, until one day, Kanagi got a fever. Imisu wanted to treat him, so she decided to go out to look for herbs even though Ohika stopped her because it might be dangerous. And when Kanagi woke up, he saw that something was burning in the distance. He went to it immediately because he had a hunch that Imisu was there. When he arrived at the location, he saw that she was already surrounded by fire. After the Hamura attacked him, that was when Imisu was consumed by its fire. He was so devastated that he also lost the will to live, and he called Hamira to take him too. But the Hamira was pleased on what he showed, and decided to choose him to be its show. Since then, he had imprinted in his mind that Hamira was also a misu. So he told them that he would do everything to get Hamira back from Akachi. After hearing that, Hinohara decided to ask Kanagi to join them, because they would change the world. Little did they know that Yorinami Zokushu was just watching them. Akachi was also informed by one of his disciples about the action of the six show. They went to Kakuri's place to check on her condition. Although they were sure that Kakuri would not last much longer, they consider Hinohara as a problem because they did not expect him to be the Tsukuyo show. They knew that Hinohara was heading towards them, but they were already thinking of a plan to stop him. While in the other world, Arata could not forget Hinohara's reaction after he told him what he did to Katawaki. He thought that the two might be really friends. At that time he saw Sugiru outside, so he quickly went down to ask him where he could find Katawaki. Sugiru took him to where Katawaki was usually seen at night. 
As Katawaki was heading to his companions, he heard them talking about him. It was here that he found out that they did not consider him as their friend, and they were only following him because he was the son of a politician. When they noticed him, they did not retract what they had said about him. Katawaki intended to start a fight with them, but Arata suddenly came and wanted to help him. Because of this, Katawaki's enemies were forced to leave there. Katawaki was still annoyed at Arata because he felt that he belittled him as he did when they were in middle school. Since Arata defended Hinohara as if he was a different person, Katawaki only became more annoyed at him. Arata was about to say that he was not Hinohara, but Hinohara's mother suddenly arrived. When she approached him, she immediately slapped Arata. It turned out that she had been looking for him for a while, and she was already worried too. While he was telling Hinohara's mother to calm down, Katawaki decided to leave them. On the other hand, as Hinohara's group continued to walk, it suddenly started to rain heavily. So Kanagi thought that they were already in Yorinami's territory. He was also one of the twelve Shinzo which was the show of the Hayagami of water. They decided to find shelter first, so Hinohara took this opportunity to ask Kanagi about the twelve Shinzo. Kanagi said that they only gathered together every time there was a special ceremony, that's why he seldom saw them. Especially the six show because apart from their uniqueness, he had never seen their faces. Meanwhile, the six show went to the Kando forest to start what they were planning. They were going to send Harunawa to the other world, so that he could be replaced by someone who would be assigned to take care of Hinohara and Tsukuyo. While Katawaki was currently in the subway to vent his anger, he felt that the people around him were just playing with him. He blamed everything that was happening to him on Hinohara, that's why he wanted to kill him. Harunawa started the switching of their world, and Katawaki was chosen to exchange places with him. Before they got separated, Harunawa used his Hayagami to insert into Katawaki's brain what had happened to Hinohara in Amawakuni. So when Katawaki arrived to the Kando forest, he was pleased because he would finally see the real Hinohara. The six show accompanied him, and they informed him of Hinohara's intention to become a great king. They wanted to make him a show too, so that he would be the one to get rid of Hinohara. For him to do this, he needed a Hayagami which was the only one capable of fighting the Tsukuyo. It was the Orochi, and like the Tsukuyo, it had been sleeping for a long time. When Katawaki touched it, the other Shinzo felt it, and the Tsukuyo also reacted to this. After that, Katawaki was able to become a show of Orochi. The next morning, he immediately looked for Hinohara. Hinohara pulled out the Tsukuyo because it reacted again for a reason. It turned out that Katawaki was already near them. Hinohara could not believe that Katawaki was also brought to that world. Katawaki took out the Orochi and attacked Hinohara, so Hinohara quickly used the Tsukuyo to block it. At that moment, Katawaki spoke hurtful words to Hinohara which became the reason why Hinohara started to be swallowed by the darkness as well. When he attacked Katawaki, Katawaki was able to block it, but he still suffered a wound on his head. The darkness affected Hinohara even more, so Kotoha quickly approached him. She tried to stop Hinohara from becoming a demon, and luckily, Hinohara listened to her. The Six Show decided to order Katawaki to retreat first because they needed to finish the reawakening of the Orochi. When Hinohara dropped the Tsukuyo, Kanagi quickly picked it up. Then he left them, so Kanadi I followed him to retrieve the Tsukuyo. When Hinohara realized what had happened, he immediately approached Kotoha, and they stayed in a hut while they waited for Kanadi I. Kotoha tried to touch Hinohara's hand, but he did not let her, so Kotoha was surprised by this. This was the moment when Kotoha realized that Hinohara was not really the Arata she knew. Hinohara clarified again that he was from another world, and that he and Arata had just switched places. He also said that Arata was currently living in their house and was doing well. He also told her everything about him and Katawaki. Since they were in middle school, Katawaki and his friends had been bullying him, but he never once fought back. When Katawaki woke up, a woman was already beside him. She introduced herself by the name Miyabi, and she would serve as his personal maid. He remembered what happened earlier, and he was happy because Hinohara finally confronted him. After several hours of searching, Kanadi finally found Kanagi. When Kanadi tried to attack him, Kanagi suddenly said that he would come back. As soon as they saw Hinohara, Kanagi returned the Tsukuyo. 
It turned out that Kanagi felt the weight of the responsibility in the Tsukuyo and knew that Hinohara was the only one who could handle it. The next day, they decided to train Hinohara in battle. After a few moments, Kanagi told Kanadi to rest so he could train with Hinohara. Kanagi told him that Katawaki was already one of the six show. So Hinohara immediately thought that Katawaki had exchanged with one of the original members of the six show. Katawaki could not avoid mentioning Hinohara's name, and Miyabi heard it too. Since he still continued to show his anger towards Hinohara, Miyabi suddenly expressed her thoughts that Katawaki liked Hinohara. She said that if he was really angry at him, he could just let him go. In Katawaki's annoyance, he aimed the Orochi at Miyabi so that she would stop talking. He told her that she did not know anything about the past between the two of them, and for him, Hinohara was to blame for all the bad things that happened in his life. He could not accept that Hinohara let him win in a game before. He believed that Hinohara seemed to belittle him, so from then on, he no longer considered him as a friend. On the other hand, Yorinami punished one of his Zokushu after he failed the task that he asked him to do. He did not want anyone to make a mistake in things he asked them to do, because for him, it was a crime. When Hinohara's group was about to head there, Hinohara chose to go through another area under Yorinami's territory. He did not want to confront Yorinami in the meantime because he wanted to know what kind of person he was. So it would be better if he met with one of Yorinami's Zokushu first. For this reason, they went to Suzukura which was the number one commercial city of Amawakuni. Based on Kanagi's knowledge, one of Yorinami's Zokushu, named Hiroko, was in charge of this area, but he had not seen this person yet. Before they could enter, they were asked to pay the passage tax, so they found out that there was a fee when entering and before leaving the city. Since they did not have enough money, they had to work first to pay for it. A man known as Suihiro suddenly came and approached them. He brought them inside the city and showed them where to work. Kanagi covered the mark on his forehead so that he would not be recognized as a member of the Twelve Shins Ho. While they were working, Hinohara noticed that Suihiro seemed to have a high position in the city, so he thought that if he could get closer to him, he might face Hiroko. He was also surprised to see a child who was forced to work with them. In the evening, he asked the shopkeepers on what kind of person Yorinami was, in the hope that he would get some information. He was looking at the hairpin on sale, when Suihiro came there too. The two of them talked, so Hinohara took the opportunity to ask him about Yorinami. Suihiro listened to him and told Hinohara everything he knew about Yorinami. And even told him what Yorinami did to develop Suzukura. The next day, the chief punished the child who was also working with them. When they approached them, they found out that the child was the one being blamed on the destroyed cart. The boy denied it, and Hinohara had a hunch that it was actually done by the two men. The chief decided to fire the boy in his job, but he would not get his salary because it would be used to repair the damaged cart. Kanadi I got angry and rushed at the chief, but Suihiro suddenly came to interfere. The chief was reprimanded because fighting was forbidden there. After that, Hinohara and Kanadi I escorted the boy, named Ruka, to the house where he was staying. And they found out that behind the so-called perfect city was a poor village with people living in poverty. They also found out that Ruka was an orphan and was living alone in the house. When they heard the story of Ruka's life, they learned the truth about the city. Kanadi I suggested that Ruka should leave there, but since they needed the passage tax, Ruka was unable to leave the city. Meanwhile, Kanagi found out that Suihiro was listening to their conversation, so he went outside to talk to him. It turned out that he knew Kanagi, and he asked Kanagi what was his thoughts of Hinohara. Kanagi also knew that his real name was not Suihiro, and the only answer he gave to his question was that Hinohara was not an ordinary person. He just continued listening to Hinohara's conversation with Ruka until he heard something from Hinohara that he liked. Because of Hinohara's words, Ruka decided that he wanted to get out of the city, so they promised him that they would take him out that night. The sixth show decided to present Katawaki to Akachi because he also had an experience similar to his current situation with Hinohara. When they arrived in Akachi's territory, Akachi immediately attacked their airship. Katawaki descended to face Akachi and tried to invite him to work with them. But Akachi rejected it and told Katawaki that what he hated the most were people who did not have the ability to fight for themselves. He was about to leave, so Katawaki begged him to help them. Akachi knew that Katawaki could not really win over Hinohara because he was only trapped in the illusion placed in his eyes. 
and to free him from being trapped, Akachi attacked one of his eyes. When he was about to leave, Katawaki stopped him again, and Akachi saw his determination to fight. For this reason, he gave his one eye to him, and this was also one of his ways to see how Hinohara fight. By nightfall, Hinohara's group started to do their plan to take Ruka out of the city. But when they came out of the gate, Suihiro stopped them. That was when Suihiro said his real name, and it turned out that he was the person that they were looking for, named Hiroko. Hinohara decided to fight him because he did not like what the city was doing to ordinary people. When Hiroko attacked, a lot of money came out from his Hayagami. Then he said that Hinohara might be the one he had been looking for a long time. He admitted that he had been following Hinohara for a while, and he knew about the hardships he suffered as well as the incident when he was almost swallowed by the darkness. When Ruka saw Yorinami's butterfly, Hiroko told Ruka that he no longer needed to leave the city because he would change it. He decided to disobey Yorinami, and he asked Hinohara to bring back the Yorinami that he knew. Because of this, they immediately went to Yorinami's place. Long ago, when Yorinami was young, he made a bracelet for his mother. He wanted to make his mother happy, but she seemed not pleased by his gift, and just told him that he should have trained in martial arts instead of wasting time making a bracelet. Since then, he forced himself to do everything, so that one day, his mother could be proud of him. And becoming a great king was one of the ways he knew to make it happen. While they were waiting for Kanadiai, whom they assigned to watch over the area, someone suddenly attacked Kotoha. When Hinohara was about to try to save her, the attacker quickly took her. Since they were sure that Yorinami was the one who did this, they quickly went to the stronghold. When they entered it, they saw Kotoha bound and locked in a spherical container. Water was also gradually filling up the container, and when Hinohara used the Tsukuyo on it, it did not work. Yorinami appeared to them and told Hinohara that if he wanted to save Kotoha, he had to defeat him first or submit to him. Using his Hayagami called Nakasawa, he started to attack Hinohara. He also did not give Kanadiai and Kanagi a chance to save Kotoha. His Zokushu were also there and watching his fight with Hinohara. Hiroko told them that if Hinohara won in the fight, it was possible that they would see the Yorinami they knew before. Yorinami continued to attack his opponent until Hiroko notified Hinohara. Because of this, Yorinami got angry with him and attacked Hiroko. Yorinami used one of his techniques called the Time Reversal Technique on Hinohara. Just in time, Katawaki came there and immediately came down to fight Hinohara again. But when he saw Hinohara's condition, Yorinami immediately told him about Hinohara's current situation. Katawaki tried to take him back, but Yorinami stopped him. Then he also attacked Katawaki and submerged him in the water, so that he and Hinohara would be together. That was the moment when Yorinami started his plan on Hinohara, so he dreamed of his mother. While he and his mother were talking, she asked him about the submission which surprised him. But he did not answer her, so Yorinami manipulated the time and went to his younger years. This time, his mother begged him to mention the word that he was ready for submission. But Hinohara still did not say it, so Yorinami was shocked by this. He could not believe that Hinohara was able to disobey his mother. For this reason, he turned Hinohara into a baby, but Hinohara suddenly heard a female voice. It turned out to be Kotoha, so he was able to use the power of Tsukuyo. He not only defeated Yorinami's technique, but he also saved Kotoha. When Yorinami was about to attack again, the Nakasawa did not follow him. He realized that he had lost in the fight, so he immediately went to his mother. She also disappeared because she was just a doll and was created by Yorinami's Hayagami. Then he talked about the reason why he was so dedicated in achieving things which he thought his mother would be happy about. But even though he had become a member of the Twelve Shinsho, his mother's view of him had not changed until she died. When Kanagi noticed the memento of Yorinami's mother, he approached it. It turned out that Yorinami had not opened it since his mother gave it to him, so he did not know what it contained. When he opened it, he was surprised to see the bracelet he had given to his mother. It was here that one of his Zokushu approached him to tell him how his mother really felt about him. Since his father's death, his mother had forced him to grow up strong. She only endured to say hurtful words to him so that he could be motivated to achieve his goals. She was only worried about his condition when the day come that she too would have to leave his side. So his mother did everything to make him grow stronger. After he cried, he apologized to Hiroko and to his other Zokushu. 
Katawaki suddenly came and challenged Hinohara. It only took a moment for them to be surprised when Katawaki's Hayagami evolved. When Hinohara pulled out the Tsukuyo, Katawaki immediately rushed at him. Although Hinohara blocked it, it created a powerful explosion due to the force of the impact. Hinohara took advantage of this opportunity to run outside, but Katawaki attacked him again. He just kept on attacking Hinohara until they reached outside. Kanade noticed that Hinohara did not want to fight Katawaki, so he told him that if he did not fight back, he might not be able to get to Haim Ou. This was the moment when he had the motivation to fight, but since Tsukuyo lacked the ability to attack, he had a hard time getting away from Katawaki's attack. Hinohara's companions also noticed this, so when Yorinami looked at the bracelet, he told his Zokushu that he would submit to Hinohara. Although once he did this, he would no longer become a great king, but he knew that through this, his mother would surely be proud of him. Hinohara tried to stop him, but Yorinami's decision was final. When he submitted to Hinohara, the Tsukuyo created a very powerful explosion, and Kikuri also felt it until tears fell down her cheeks. The explosion was so powerful that the entire stronghold was destroyed. They saw Hinohara and Katawaki who were still standing to continue the fight. Katawaki attacked again, and it was here that Hinohara used the power of Nakasawa. Because of this, he was able to parry all of Katawaki's attacks. Katawaki suddenly remembered what Akachi told him, and he already understood it. So through the eyes that he had given him, he wanted Akachi to see how he would fight. Kanagi was surprised after hearing what Katawaki said. When Katawaki attacked again, Hinohara used the Tsukuyo to block him and was able to knock his opponent down. The Tsukuyo lit up again and after a while, they felt a tremor. This happened because the large stone suddenly appeared. Hinohara used Susiai no Hinawa which was one of Tsukuyo's techniques. When he used it on his opponent, Katawaki even tried to block it. But he knew that he would not last long with this technique, so he gave a warning to Hinohara on the next time they met. Due to the power of Susiai no Hinawa, Katawaki was thrown away, but he was immediately taken by the sick show. As Hinohara was feeling the power of Tsukuyo, he also remembered his past with Katawaki. A few minutes later, Yorinami's Zokushu spoke to him. They also decided to submit to him because they also wanted to accompany Yorinami to protect and guide him. Hinohara could not do anything about it, and they submitted to him at the same time. When he and Arata talked again, Hinohara informed him that Katawaki and a member of the Six Show had also switched places, so he told Arata to be careful. On the other hand, the Six Show could not believe that Hinohara had activated the Susiai no Hinawa. In this situation, they needed to get rid of Hinohara as soon as possible. On the other hand, the other Shinzo were also eager to face Hinohara. This is the end of the last episode of Era to the Legend Season 1. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss new uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.